So, good afternoon. Uh, I want to also talk about water security. I will go over a lot of points that Blanca did, but we will, I will have it specifically for Latin America. Uh, I just wanted to remind you that our goal here is to mobilize academies to contribute to the design of the Sustainable Development Goals and also to protect and manage the natural resource base of economic and social development. And so the water is a very important resource. Uh, we have seen these, but I wanted to point out some of these points as we will be seeing how the situation is exactly in Latin America. Uh, we are working on uh, equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water, also sanitation to improve water quality and increase water use efficiency. These are very important points and they are based on the problems that we have found uh, globally. But you, we will find all these points again in Latin America. It's very necessary to develop better integrated watershed management and to protect uh, ecosystems. The uh, cooperation for developing countries is very important uh, to be able to work on different problems of the water resources. And we also, as scientists, need to work with the communities where the problems are. And now it won't change. There. So I wanted to start with the coverage of improved drinking water sources. Uh, actually, the glo global co coverage for developing countries is now 84, and the world is 87. So the Latin America and Caribbean areas are, have a very high coverage and have been able to develop this water, uh, the safe, dr improved drinking water sources. But w there is a great difference between uh, the water supply in urban areas and in rural areas. If you can see, we have the, the excuse me, in the world, we have a disparity from 96 to 78, urban and rural, and in Latin America, uh, 97 to 73. So there is a big difference here. Uh, only 49% of the rural population in Latin American countries have access to sanitation services. Uh, we have uh, really big problems in the rural areas where you can see that seven out of 10 people without sanitation are from rural communities. You see here, just, just another way to show you the disparity we have between the urban and the rural areas. And the best system uh, is also very good to compare the statistics uh, from, the, um, from the WHO uh, to the health improvements of the population. And we have had, uh, you can see this best on piped drinking water. So as you can see in the rural areas again, we have a very low coverage of piped drinking water on the premises. There is still a lot of open defecation uh, open air defecation. Uh, these are some of the countries that still have problems with, with this in Central America, uh, in Nicaragua, where I live, and in Honduras. And there are also South American countries that have problems with open air defecation. And of course, we know the situation in Haiti. Uh, there's also a lot of problems with contamination in rural areas uh, due to uh, agricultural practices in, with pesticide use. There's a lot of nitrate contamination of groundwater. Uh, we have a lot of bacterial sources due to the open defecation and a lot of eutrophication of the surface waters. Now I would like to go into more of the urban situation. I would like to point out that YANAS, uh, the, our water program, is developing this year or is almost finished with a book on urban waters in the Americas, uh, where 20 countries are participating, and this will be published in 2015. Now most of the problems that I'm going to point out are uh, 
conclusions and summary of these 20 chapters. So as you can see, this is just to show you how the percentage of urban population in Latin America, uh, how high the percentage is in compared to other parts of the world. So we have a very high percentage of urban uh, population. Some of the most prominent problems that we found in the urban areas are factors, of course, when you have a concentration of population in these urban areas, that means that you have to adapt your water systems. So there are uh, bad management of solid waste, which affect the water systems, uh, the distribution of the drainage systems. We have a lot of problems. We'll see that later when we have climate change. Uh, an absence of appropriate watershed management around the cities and the areas, and this causes a lot of uh, flash flooding and also a lot of sedimentation that comes into the cities. Uh, the water supply services in urban areas are quite good in over 95% in the great majority of the countries of the Americas, but there are a lot of problems with the continu continuity of services. Uh, this means that you have a lot of problems because in the households they have to store water and this causes a lot of health problems due to vectors and other sanitation problems. There are also a lot of problems also in, in, in other countries, developed countries, but more so in the ruptures in the distribution system, which uh, brings a lot of problems to the loss of water. This is just an example of Managua, where they have developed a system. Uh, the, the only area that really has 24-hour services is blue, and the other ones go down to two hours, six hours. So this is the problem that you can see in the continuity of the service of, of drinking water. And uh, all cities of South America, Central America, are affected. And uh, Blanca Minich, Manich, uh, mentioned this, but in Latin America, this is very prominent, that you have the most problems in peri-urban areas due to the migration coming from the rural areas. The treatment of wastewater in urban areas is still uh, a big problem. Uh, in South America, you can see that the coverage is around 80%, uh, and it, but still there is a fact that 15% of the, of the wastewaters coming from these systems go into, do not receive primary treatment. And in Central America, the problem is even greater, where you can find a lot of uh, wastewater that goes into surface waters and causes eutrophication. Uh, there is being some improvement made in some of the countries. Uh, for example, the city of Managua that had an open uh, drainage non-sewage system that went right into the lake of Managua now does have a treatment plant that is functioning which has really helped the health situation and sanitation system of the inhabitants of the city. Uh, this is just to show you the, the how good the drinking water coverage uh, is in some of the different uh, Latin American countries in Central America, South America, and also Caribbean. But this has all has consequences. Uh, so this is a graph just to show you uh, how health is related to uh, the coverage of sanitation in these countries. As you can see where you have the highest mortality in children, you also have a very lacking coverage of sanitation in Haiti. Uh, these are some of the health problems that, that are caused by uh, the, uh, the con non-continuity -conti of the coverage of water. We, there are uh, sp uh, sporadic outbreaks of dengue. This is not only caused by water, but also there's a change in the stereotypes of dengue. And for this reason, we have different um, pe peaks in the curves of the occurrence of dengue. We also have this, also mentioned by Blanca, that the lower income groups uh, have a, a lot higher percentage that they pay for access to water. And globally, the higher income group is twice as likely to use improved water services as the poor. The treatment of wastewater 
And the Central American countries, you can see have, you can see that in the table I showed you, have a coverage from 63 to 95, it's just pretty wide range. And in South America, 57 to 100. Uh, but this uh, does not always mean that there's still a lot of contamination. Uh, in cases, we have special cases where there is sanitation systems in place, but they cause uh, contamination to the groundwater and also to uh, surface waters. So some of the sanitation systems need to be improved. This is a, a problem uh, that we need to look at. Uh, another problem, of course, is the quality of water. Uh, we don't know enough about the quality of water because the mo monitoring systems in most countries are not uh, of really high quality. There is a ne necessity to have better laboratories which control the water quality. And what about climate change? This changes a lot of, uh, this uh, makes a lot of problems more serious. Uh, that means that in 20 years, we will have a, a water demand of by 40%, which will increase, and the areas that will suffer probably more are the poor rural areas. All this impacts even more the economic growth and affects poverty. Uh, one good initiative is that uh, uh, in 2003, the United Nations declared the right, the human right for water. Uh, I think this is very important because it gives the, uh, the poor society the, really the right to have, and this can be argumented with into the governments. So I um, wanted to come to some suggestions how we really could, can, as academies of science, contribute to improving water, water security. Uh, as we've mentioned, uh, it is very important to have uh, better solutions to peri-urban areas, which sometimes are not adaptable to central uh, sewage systems. So we must rethink how we can adapt this to maybe having smaller units of uh, wastewater systems. And obviously rural settlements can never have, it's very hard to have centralized sanitation systems and we need to rethink what the best remedies would be in rural areas to assure the widespread use that are adapted to the culture of the population. Education is very important. Uh, by chance, I found this wonderful master's program. No, this is our master's program in Nicaragua, uh, Science of Water, which offers professionals a, a, a broad range of uh, classes and material so that they can then go into their institutions or back to the universities and really work with water-related problems. It's been very successful. Uh, we have most of our students, graduated students now in governmental institutions, uh, in universities, or in consulting firms, and not only in Nicaragua, but also in Central America. It is very important to keep up capacity training, and not just for university level, but also on a community level and uh, in the uh, governmental institutions. Uh, Yanas as uh, uh, the Inter-American Network of Academies of Science has done a lot of uh, workshops also for managers and the future plans are now to concentrate more on capacity training in different regions of the Americas. Uh, I'm also suggesting that it's very important to have almost in all countries or more uh, very good research centers. It is very important to, to know how the water resource situation is in every country, surface waters and groundwaters. These are two examples uh, in Latin America and I think it would be very good to promote more as academies the establishment of good research centers focused on water resources. It's very important to strengthen the governmental institutions uh, that have water management. In, in uh, almost all the chapters of our new book, most of the, uh, the texts refer to that uh, all the countries, almost all the countries do have water management uh, or national water authorities, but in many cases, uh, 
it was mentioned that the effectiveness of these institutions and really the enforcement of the, the laws and regulations are not yet in place. And we have been talking all day, it's very important to have policies which really correspond to all these uh, management problems that we have. It's, it's important to have better governments, governance. Uh, that means that the public officials should really have accountability through certain system. Uh, to, and it's important to reinforce participation of communities in these regulation processes. These are things that I think is very important that we as uh, uh, science academies uh, not only work in our specialty, but we, that we have nexus to the problems that are, uh, that are linked to the water management. For example, this morning we mentioned the, the very important uh, nexus or the link from, between agriculture and water. It's very important to have, when we mentioned this, the link to communities, the cities. This is also from our, from our, new, our new book, and everyone knows this, are under great pressure from floods and also from droughts. Uh, we, have had, we have seen changes in the precipitation patterns and changes. This, along with the changes in soil use, is bringing a lot of sedimentation into the cities. We need to have good systems, drainage systems in the cities, uh, and improvement on the catchment areas around the cities. Uh, this is the nexus that we need to food security. Uh, this is what we were talking about this morning, that agriculture accounts for 71% of all the water withdrawals, and in the future and under climate change, this will probably change. So we need a more water efficiency in irrigation. Uh, these are some suggestions for the reuse. This would be a way to uh, use water, not, not really pure water, but reuse water in irrigation systems in rural areas. And the nexus to health. As you notice, these are the sustainability development goals. Uh, most of the factors that they mentioned are water-related diseases. The waterborne diseases and also contamination through chemicals. Uh, the water and health in urban areas, we have seen uh, in the reviews of all the countries, uh, most of the acute diarrhea diseases, malaria and dengue, and, and also related to water transfer is the new chikungunya, which most Latin, uh, a lot of the Central American countries now and also the Caribbean countries are under the pressure of a large amount of cases of chikungunya. Uh, there is a lot of problems with heavy metals in water, uh, to mention arsenic, mercury, and other metals. In Central America, I wanted to mention to you there has been a very big increase in chronic renal diseases. Uh, it is very important now to do a lot of research to see if this is related to uh, the, a common consumption factor in water resources. There has been a notable improvement in the health situation caused by a, a better bettering of the access to water and increasing installation of sanitation. So in this way we can see that the, the improvement of these systems brings also a bettering of the health situation of the population. Uh, the water management, e, it's, it's linked to energy is especially important. Uh, because water is used in almost all production uh, of uh, the different types of energy, and also energy is used for the provision and treatment of water. So hand in hand, the specialist in water and energy should really look at the different forms of energy and try to improve the efficiency. Uh, this will be and is already a global challenge. There is a new uh, review of this from, uh, just recently came out from the United Nations over water and energy. Uh, and this is very important also uh, as it has crucial impacts on poverty alleviation. 
Uh, it has, we have seen cases now, and this is probably, will uh, probably increase with climate change, that water and energy could be constraints to economic growth. And we have also observed, there's also a new book coming out from the energy group from Yanas, uh, where uh, there's a chapter on water and energy, where you can see that the renewable energy forms use a lot less water. And just to conclude, the importance of water equity. Uh, this was a slide from a professor who was at our meeting of Yanis. Uh, it was a joint meeting between the uh, Academies of Science of the Americas and Africa, where we talked about all these issues and also one of the main problems of equity. Thank you very much. <laughs>